Soil is the basis of all civilization. You have no soil, you have nothing. Everything under the sun, insect, plant-wise, it's going to be based and, and anchored by really healthy soil systems. Soil health is critical to the future of our population and the world's population. We have more and more people all the time and we are farming our acreage more and more intensively all the time to feed these people. If we're going to continue down this path, soil health is critical to our survival as a species. Okay, what we're looking at here is vetch. What we can see is underground where it's fixing the nitrogen. When you're talking about soil health, it's kind of a more broad picture of what's happening in the soil. Healthy soil is going to have a really different biological component that really makes that fertility go. Every kind of farm can take that next step towards their soil health no matter where they are. I took the farm over, I guess, 20 some years ago. And there's a transition when you take over a new farm, if it's been conventionally tilled. Anytime you do tillage, you introduce oxygen and you burn up your organic matter. You hurt all your bacteria and fungi and your earthworms. It was in such poor shape that it didn't even grow good weeds. He has been able to, in 15 or 20 years of long-term no-till, to double what he can yield on this farm. So um, that's a little bit of an insight on the profitability of no-till farming. There is this misconception that because you're in a uh, large city that um, you're going to have lots of uh, trash or buildup or whatever kind of waste uh, that's going to be contaminating the soil. But the fact of the matter is, um, you know, you can have excellent soil if you work at it. Uh, this area here, as you can see, is pretty, pretty loamy. Like this is mostly the, uh, the result of what happens when you apply a lot of organic material. And in this case, wood chips over many years allow them to break down. We have pretty high quality soil, at least in our growing space. So over the winter, just like with you know, most farms in the area, we're gonna be growing some cover crops to increase soil fertility, uh, improve the amount of organic material in the soil, and just overall do our best to grow some really high quality soil. One of the reasons that we use extensive cover crop is because having those living roots in the soil, it just kind of opens up everything, it aerates it out, it stops runoff, um, it, brings, it brings back soil life and it helps with compaction. There are just so many things that cover crops do that make it, make it a worthwhile investment. So instead of stripping the land bare of all of that it's worth, we want to make sure that we are intentionally putting back more than we're taking out. So in that way, uh, we are stewarding the land for not just our families and our communities, but for future generations to come. As we know, the Bay has had some health issues. But we're working hard to improve the bay's health and lessen our impact on the bay. Soil health plays a critical role in that. I think it's pretty thoroughly documented now that cover crops are benefiting our environment. The higher your organic matter, the, the soil becomes like a sponge. It takes in the water, it doesn't run off. Basically, they say every 1% organic matter uh, holds 20 to 25,000 to 27,000 gallons of water. You, you cut down on runoff, you, you, which cuts down on pollution. Uh, nutrients that are on that field stay there rather than wind up in a watershed somewhere. That we are seeing kind of these extreme weather patterns. And so how do you prepare for extreme heat, extreme rain, extreme cold? I think that you have to build up your soils to be able to be resilient. It really is kind of a win-win-win, triple bottom line, positive impact on the farm itself. Environmental impacts, including water quality and soil quality, reduced erosion, biodiversity, and then that climate change bottom line where we're reducing greenhouse gas emissions and possibly even sequestering carbon. And that can make farmers pretty serious heroes in the fight against climate change as well. And there they are, new pasture, happy sheep. How 
how the principles of soil health get expressed is going to look different on every farm because every farm is different. The important thing is to start where you are and take that next step. I'd suggest for people that really want to start learning about soil health, uh, connect with your local extension center. Uh, and generally, just connecting with other farmers, really getting that kind of hands-on uh, understanding of what everyone's soil looks like is really one of the easiest ways. The information is out there. You just have to access it and try to determine what will work in your case. Anybody can do this, what we do. You just have to be willing to try. It's not equipment. It's what's between the two ears. You have to get that mindset that their number one most important thing is your soil. And I think the only real failure is not doing it at all. And so you can do it in any small step. Anybody can treat their soils well. I think that you really have to be dedicated to that long-term goal, which it takes time. The Million Acre Challenge sets a goal for all of us to work together to create healthy soil on one million acres in Maryland over the next decade. And that's a huge goal because it's one half of the farmland in Maryland. We are setting that big goal because we think healthy soil is critical to the future of Maryland farms and to their contributions to Maryland's environment. I think Maryland farmers are some of the best farmers in the country. They were early adopters of many of these practices that we see today in the rest of the country. Lie down. That'll do. Good boy. That'll by continuing to show that leadership, by joining the Million Acre Challenge, by taking that leadership into the soil health arena, Maryland uh, farmers are going to show the rest of the country how it's done. There are some green onion scallions. It's important to uh, engage in this Million Acre Challenge uh, and really ensure that we have you know, this amount of farmland that's under uh, really regenerative practices. It shouldn't be a million acres, it should be every acre of farmland in Maryland. Every acre of farmland in the United States, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a win for the farmer, it's a win for the environment, uh, and it's a win for society and future generations.